All right, this video covers points on circles using sine and cosine. So we really want to focus on points on circles. Okay, so let's take a look at points on circles. So we've learned a lot so far about the relationship between angles, circles, radiuses, all this stuff. So here's three pictures. The only difference between these, pitch, three, these three pictures is the size of the circle, the radius. So, for example, in this first picture right here, the medium one, we have an angle theta radius r and it ends at a point x y so this particular angle theta leaves us at this point x y now that means that the vertical height of the triangle now if i drop this straight down to make the vertical height i get a right triangle and we love right triangles because we learn a lot about right triangles we know a lot about right triangles but the fact that the vertical height here is our y value because again, we're ending at x comma y, y is the y value. The horizontal distance of the triangle is the x value. And what happens is we're looking at the relationship between those three values, the relationship between r, y, and x. And they create some really, really important ratios. And what I want you to understand is that when the radius gets bigger, that ratio does not change. So here's a bigger circle, right? I tried to make it clearly bigger. I also have a vertical distance of y. Obviously, the y is bigger than the y over here. I also have a horizontal distance of that triangle is x. Okay, no joke. This triangle is clearly bigger than this triangle right here, but they're similar triangles because they're both based on the same angle theta. I didn't change theta. All I did was make the radius bigger. So they're similar triangles. Here's another one that's really, really teeny tiny. You got to kind of squint to see it, but it's the same idea. Y is the vertical height of that triangle. X is the horizontal distance of that triangle. And we get the exact same angle. Notice I didn't change theta on any of these. So what happens is the ratios between the radius, the x's, and the y's stays the same regardless of your radius, regardless of your size of your circle. And this is really important to understand. Since what's important is the ratios between x, y, and r. Even if the circle gets bigger or smaller, the ratio stays the same. To be able to refer to these ratios more easily, we give them names. Since the ratios depend on the angle, we will write them as functions of the angle theta. So, for a point x, y on a circle of radius r at an angle theta, we know that the ratio of the y value divided by the radius is a very common ratio. Again, no matter the size of the circle, that ratio stays the same. So we invented this trig function called sine. So sine of angle theta equals that ratio. So the circle may change size, meaning the y might be bigger, the r might be bigger, but the ratio between y and r stays the same no matter what you have, right? So as long as the angle stays the same, the ratio also stays the same. So we invented this, um, we called this ratio sine. Now it's written S-I-N-E, but when we use it in abbreviation as a function, it's S-I-N. But don't ever say sin. Now the other ratio that's important is x divided by r. Once again, we might change the circle and make it bigger, so x and r obviously become bigger. But no matter what, as long as we reference the same angle, we get the same ratio, and that ratio we named cosine. Again, it's written cosine, but we abbreviate it with COS. Please don't ever call it cos or cos. It's cosine, and we just have an abbreviation for it, but we still say cosine. So sine is the name of this really important ratio between y and r, and cosine is the name of this really important ratio between x and r. So the idea is very simple. If you go back to our pictures up here, Theta does not change, but the triangle size changes. But as long as I keep that angle the same, my ratios stay the same. So in this picture, the ratio between y over r, here y over r, even down here y over r, those three ratios are all exactly the same. We call it sine. Also, we have the other ratio of x over r, x over r here, x over r here. Even though we have different size tri or different size triangles, the ratio stays the same, and we named that ratio cosine. So those are our two big values that I need you to know from this video, sine and cosine. The other important thing that this is, is the Greeks were really wanting to find a connection between the point on a circle, x, y, and the radius that found it, 
and theta the angle. So remember, how did I land at this particular point? Well, I moved at a ra I moved at an angle of theta with a radius of r, and I ended at the point x y. So the Greeks were really after trying to find a relationship between x y r and theta, and that's where sine and cosine come in. Here's our first example. The point 3 comma 4 is on the circle of radius 5 at some angle theta. Find cosine and sine. First thing you can do, if you really want to, is to draw a picture of this, right? Well, um, probably kind of a crappy picture, but 3 comma 4. So 3, 1, 2, 3, up, 1, 2, 3, 4. Here's 3 comma 4, right? That is on the point of a radius, right? That is a point on a circle of radius 5, right? So um, we could swing this circle around here. Really bad circle. But regardless, that point could be gotten to by going at an angle of theta. And what we're trying to say is, hey, what is cosine of theta. Well, we know that the relationship is between 3, that's the x, 4, that's the y, and 5, that's the radius. So cosine's relationship between the x over the r, so 3 fifths. Sine is the relationship, or the ratio, between the y, 4, over the radius, 5. So there we go. Cosine is 3 fifths, sine is 4 fifths. Very, very, very simple to understand. All you need is the point, x comma y, and the ratio, or the, I'm sorry, the radius, r. Okay, moving on. Now, let's work with some angles that we love, right? What are some angles that we love? Well, let's talk about 90 degrees. We love 90 degrees. Now, this circle has an unknown radius. So, to get from the center of the circle to 90 degrees is a radius of r, which means that that point right there would be 0, comma, r. Just think about that for a second. I don't know the radius of this circle. So, I do know at 90 degrees straight up, I have a vertical distance of r, the radius, horizontal distance is easy, 0. So let's see here. Um, let's do cosine. Cosine of 90 degrees would be the x value, 0, divided by the radius, r. Well, guess what? 0 divided by any radius in the world is 0. So cosine of 90 degrees is 0. Don't forget, I could also call 90 degrees pi over 2 if I want it to be in radians. And I would also get the same result, 0. doesn't matter if you're in degrees or radians. It doesn't change the fact that cosine is 0. All right, how about sine? Sine of 90 degrees is going to be the y value, the y value is r, divided by the radius, which is also r, so I get 1. So sine of 90 degrees is 1. That's because at 90 degrees, my y value equals my radius, so r divided by r would be 1. But don't forget, I could also claim 90 degrees to be pi over 2. Same value, these are equivalent, just different measurements, radians versus degrees, I also get 1. One. Okay, let's quickly also do 180 degrees. Everybody likes 180 degrees. All right, as a point here, that would be negative r comma zero because the radius is straight over, but it's in the negative direction. That's why it's negative r. And the vertical distance is it's not up, it's not down, it's at zero. So let's see here. I'm going to grab a different color here just to show this one. All right, so let's see here. Uh, cosine of 180 degrees. Cosine is the x value, negative r, divided by the radius, which is r, hence I get negative 1. Sine of 180 degrees is going to be the y value, 0, divided by the radius r, which, again, 0 divided by anything is 0. So I now know cosine and sine of 90 degrees, and I also know cosine and sine of 180 degrees, simply by understanding where those points are going to be at, regardless of what the radius is. All right, now, another way I could look at these formulas is, think about it. I know that cosine of theta is equal to the x value divided by r. So if I multiply the r to both sides, I find out that x is r times cosine of theta. Now, same thing. I know that sine of theta equals y over r. If I multiply both sides by r, I get that y equals r times sine of theta. Pretty easy to understand. It's just a different way of looking at the exact same formula, the exact same function. 
However, we also have this input. Now, this is going to come up a lot in later units, but the unit circle is a circle that has a radius of 1. So if you have a circle of radius 1, that means your r value is 1. That means x is simply cosine. And again, your r value is 1, so you have a y value of simply sine. So the unit circle is an easy circle to work with because it has radius 1. Makes your calculations a little bit simpler. So this is a pretty important idea to understand. Now, Let's talk about the circle that I love. The circle I love starts at 0, 0 and has a radius of r. Well, back in our circle um, section, we learned that the form of the first circle is x minus the center squared plus y minus the center squared equals r squared. Well, because the center is 0, it makes this really simple. x squared plus y squared equals r squared. Now, what I'm going to do is instead of writing x squared, I'm going to substitute in the fact that I just showed you that x is the same thing as r times cosine of theta. Same thing, instead of writing y squared, I'm going to substitute r times sine of theta squared equals r squared. So all I did was I substituted in for x and y, which I just showed you on the previous slide. So what happens here is I get r squared times cosine squared of theta. Now I want to take a second and show you something real quick here. When we write cosine, this is a complete side note right now. When we write cosine of theta squared, we actually put the square inside the cosine. Now here's the reason why. If I write cosine theta squared, People are going to think that I'm squaring theta, but no, I'm not squaring theta. I'm squaring the entire thing. It's cosine of theta all squared. So to not have any confusion with people thinking that that cosine, that the theta is being squared, I make sure that I put the square on the cosine out here. So this is why we put the square right kind of after the cos before theta. So same thing over here. When we take r sine theta squared, we get r squared times sine squared of theta, and we get equals r squared still. Now what happens here is every term has an r squared. So I could divide everything by r squared, and I get cosine squared of theta plus sine squared of theta equals r, I'm sorry, equals, <laughs> I almost messed up there, right? Everything gets divided by r squared, so r squared divided by r squared is 1. So this becomes an extremely important identity, right? This is a really, really important. It's actually called the Pythagorean identity. Pythagorean identity. Now, it gets this name because, remember, the form of the first circle extends from a squared plus b squared equals c squared. We built all of this straight down by that idea, so that's where we get this all comes from the Pythagorean identity, that cosine squared plus sine squared equals 1. Now, another way you could look at this is think about our triangle, right? Here's our triangle. Here's theta. Right? We understand that here's the radius, here's the vertical height y, here's the horizontal x, right? We know that x squared plus y squared equals r squared. That's using the Pythagorean theorem. Hey, that's what I got right here. And if you replace x with what it is in terms of the ratio, r times cosine, replace y with its ratio, r times sine, you get this new formula that is super important, cosine squared plus sine squared equals 1. All right, let's put this formula to use. If sine of theta equals 3 sevenths and theta is in the second quadrant, find cosine of theta. Now, why does being in the second quadrant matter? Well, if I make my quadrants here, right here is quadrant 2. In quadrant 2, I need to remember that x's are negative, y's are positive. So let's think here. I want to use, there's two ways to actually solve this problem, so I'm going to show you both ways. I don't care which way you like, but I'm going to show you both anyway. The first is to use the formula I just found. Cosine of theta squared plus sine squared of theta equals 1. This formula connects sine and cosine together. So what happens is, I don't know what cosine is, so I'm going to leave that alone for a second. But I do know what sine of theta is. Sine of theta is 3 sevenths, but that needs to be squared. Remember, sine of theta is 3 sevenths, so sine squared would be 3 sevenths squared. All I'm doing was substitution. So I get cosine squared of theta plus 9 49ths equals 1. 
So cosine squared of theta equals, well, I'm going to subtract that over. So I'm going to do 1 minus 9 forty ninths. Not, um, 1, if you need to use a calculator, go ahead. 1 minus 9 forty ninths is 40 forty ninths. Hopefully you're following me. How do I get rid of a square? Well, I'm going to go ahead and square both sides. Square root, I'm sorry, square root both sides. So I get cosine of theta equals. Now remember, could be plus, could be minus when you take a square root. Let's see here. The square root of 40, I don't know. The square root of 49, I do know. However, I can clean this up because 40 is 4 times 10. And the two, 4 can come out as a 2. So I get 2 radical 10 over 7. Now, my answer could be positive or negative, but go back to what I reminded you in the very beginning. Since I'm in the second quadrant, I know that x's have to be negative. Well, cosines represent x's, right, because x equals r times cosine. So that means if x is negative, then cosine has to be negative as well. So cosine of theta is going to be negative 2 radical 10 over 7. Very, very, very simple there. Hopefully you understand that. Now, what's the second way to solve this? Well, the second way is to just think about this triangle, right? So I'm going to draw a triangle here real quick, and I'm going to make this theta. Now, I know that sine is y over r. So that means my vertical distance would be 3, and my radius would be 7. The radius is the hypotenuse when you're thinking about this triangle. So now I could use Pythagorean's theorem to find this missing side. We'll call it A. We know that A squared plus 3 squared equals 7 squared. Follow me so far? So let's see here. I get A squared equals, uh, A squared plus 9 equals 49. So I get A squared equals 40. Square root both sides. I get A equals 2 radical 10. Hopefully you remember that because I reduced the radical. Now that's A, or you could call that your x value, right? Your horizontal distance. So now all you got to tell yourself is what's cosine? Oh yeah, remember cosine is x, 2 radical 10, over my radius of 7. So I knew my um, radius must be 7. So there's my answer, but don't forget I'm in quadrant 2, so that means that x's have to be negative in quadrant 2. So hopefully um, that all makes a lot of sense to you and that you can understand these ideas. So the key things I need you to understand is I really need you to understand all the way back to the very beginning, this idea that these ratios between x, y, and r are really important ratios that don't change even when the circle gets bigger or smaller. And those ratios need to be given names. So the two most famous names we gave them are sine and cosine. Sine is the ratio of y over r. Cosine is the ratio of x over r. And these two formulas, these two ratios, are really important because they connect y, r, x, and theta, the angle. All right? So that allows us to solve problems like this one. Very, very simple. All you got to do is think about those ratios, right? They also allow us to understand um, values on the unit circle that we know and love. And this is really important. This is where things should make a lot of sense to you. And that is if I simply kind of multiply over, I get these two really, really important formulas. X equals R times cosine and Y equals R times sine. Those are important to be used because, again, these formulas connect X, Y, and theta and um, that's like a huge part of understanding triangles and circles. And lastly, I can't stress the Pythagorean identity enough. Hopefully you truly understand how I was able to build this, but this allows us to make an instant connection between sine and cosine. As long as we remember that sine squared plus cosine squared equals 1. I said it in the other order, but addition doesn't matter. Cosine squared plus sine squared equals 1. A really, really important formula to always keep in mind. Because as long as we know that formula, Anytime we know sine, we could use it to understand and help us find what cosine is. Pretty, pretty simple, but make sure that you understand those key concepts, please.